Hello and welcome. Um, thank you for joining us today uh, for our webinar, Google Analytics Basics. If you wouldn't mind taking a moment to answer our poll, which should pop up on your screen momentarily, that'll help us better understand your current Google Analytics use. Just to note, the information we're presenting today is based on the existing Google Analytics and Search Console information and capabilities as of April 2020. Um, these capabilities do change over time. So if you're listening to this webinar later in 2020 or in 2021 or later than that, the information that you're seeing may have changed. Um, we do anticipate putting out webinars in the future as information and capabilities change. So I'd like to first um, introduce Randall Evans. Um, he is, um, Randall is our um, um, Randall is our communications and brand measurement analyst. And Randall, if you wouldn't mind just saying hi and um, introducing yourself for a moment before we get started. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm working on advancing the slides here. We have our first technical snap of at least we got it out the way early. Let's see. There we go. Sorry, poll question. So I'll jump around a little bit. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Again, apologies for the little uh, technicality there. Um, my name is Randall Evans, as Tanya said, and I am a communications and brand analyst for analytic design slash mosaic data services. Um, just a little bit about me. My background is in um, research and measurement. So I did it for a lot of years in a corporate setting um, mostly doing media analysis and content analysis and uh, benchmarking and competitive analysis um, for a lot of brands or issues or products. Uh, and a lot of the work was focused on media, having, again, come from the public relations communi communications background. Um, for the last 10 years or so, I have sort of transitioned to do more marketing work, um, which involves a lot of research and analysis for web platforms, uh, which is why I, how I ended up um, hooking up and, and getting involved with this great company. And so what we try to do is in for the websites that we build or for the websites that we sort of help to go in and diagnose what's going on, um, I try to use my experience to to figure out from either a technical perspective if there are things that websites are doing or not doing um, where they could be optimized or from a content perspective. And so that either comes from looking at the content that's there, looking at a lot of SEO work. So SEO being how people are finding your content that don't know it exists. So if people are searching for things online um, through link strategy. So if, you're, if you have a product or a service or a good, you know, what, are there any other web properties out there or any other places that are linking to your content that are, are providing people a gateway to get to where your content is? And so there are a bunch of different tools out there um, to sort of measure and, and analyze the things that are there. But one of the most common and the most popular is Google Analytics, which is what we will um, delve into today. So, um, but Within the Google Analytics family, there are some other products which sort of look at different aspects of traffic and linking and searching and, and technical things um, and advertising for that matter. And so what I wanted to do today was just to give a quick overview of what Google Analytics is in general, what the, the, the sort of mission and the purpose of, of doing analytics is, look at some of the other products that connect with it um, and then uh, specifically look at some reports that are in there and talk about some of the, the definitions and the basics of them. Because I find a lot of them 
they have names and you kind of have an understanding of what they are, but it helps to have a little bit of a technical background or a technical basis to know what they mean and how they're calculated. Um, and just really in understanding that you can know what metrics will be most important to you, how those metrics and uh, are calculated and put together and therefore know which ones are you know, some are a little better for standalone, some are a little better to look at over time, some are a little better for comparison sakes. Um, you know, and some, frankly, are are not necessarily going to be of interest to you, depending on what kind of a website you have. So I uh, just want to give a quick overview of that. The Search Console, Google Ads, uh, and delving into the advertising thing, there comes a point when, and of course, this isn't a blanket statement for you know, for any and all websites that are out there, but there are certain times when you have done the amount of work in trying to get organic traffic or trying to do link strategies, and it's time when the brand is at a time or at a place where it's mature enough where um, advertising comes into play. And, and pay per click advertising is the most common, although there are many different others. Um, but the Google Ads console is, uh, is tied into Google Analytics as well. And lastly, um, I want to show uh, just a quick sample of one of our products, the managed analytics uh, platform, um, which just gives you uh, a way to access your data and gives you a way to sort of mix and match any different data sets that you might want to put together and have them in an easy place to access them and, and uh, configured in a way that's easy for you or whoever your staff or whoever your stakeholders are for accessing that content. So before I delve in, Tanya, was there anything else uh, that I had missed or anything else I, did, I should uh, talk about before we get started? No, before you start showing live, um, you wouldn't mind flipping to the next slide and we'll just kind of talk through the, um, the data-driven decisions. Absolutely. So, the data drivers of, of the, you know, and the growth of your business, we've sort of broken this down to three top level things. And so, um, first of all, we have our quantitative data sets. So these are things like, you know, your number of visitors um, within your pages and blog posts and pop by popularity, obviously our, our quantitative data or our KPI there is page views. So how many people are, are looking at these pages? And even with in those pages, there's more qualitative data, like how long someone is on a site, or if there are specific actions that someone can take within a website uh, to engage with those pages. And so that uh, the quantitative and qualitative data are what we look at holistically um, in that set of things. The second thing are your sort of common technical metrics. So this is other sites that are sending traffic to you, um, whether that be search engines or whether that be other blogs or whether that be social media platforms. Um, and just on the technical side, once the, the traffic is there, how the user experience goes. So if, there, if you have pages that, for example, are not friendly to mobile sites and 75% of your visitors come in on a phone, that's not going to work out. That's not going to be the best experience. And that could affect um, you know, how many people come back to your site for things. Uh, website speed, there are a lot of things that can be done on the technical side, whether how things are cached or how images are compressed or just a, a plethora of, of technical things that are there that, again, can affect the user experience and the, and the user's interface. Um, not to mention things like site speed um, and, and sort of architecture of site pages, how easy it is to navigate either for eyes reading the site or for bots that are reading the site to serve up pages to search engines. In the main search engine, site speed is definitely a ranking factor. And so if you have two sites and all else are even and one site loads a lot faster than the other, that site in the complexity of all the algorithms that are out there to, to determine what pages get, you know, first, second, third position uh, on a particular search query, those are things like site speed or mobile friendliness that will factor in. And so if we can stay on top of those and know where we are seeing problems and fix those things, um, it just helps overall to help put 
our sites and our contents in better positions to be consumed. Um, and just frankly, using your data to optimize whatever your marketing or outreach strategy is. Um, and so whether that's looking at the messages that are resonating, looking at the links, looking at the locations where things are that can get traffic to your site, and then ultimately having your site set up in a way in which those visitors then get converted into leads or users. And so if that's getting them to sign up, um, say for a newsletter or getting them to purchase something, if you have an e-commerce site, um, or even frankly, if you, you know, if, if you are just getting information out, if you have information like a blog, getting people to share that with their social networks or with their other networks, um, it's really about the engagement. And, and, you know, I always tell folks when you build or invest in a website, how people are using that site, uh, the data that are created through that, that data is yours and it's yours to use to optimize the site and to really make sure that you're serving up customers, um, clients, other relationships, whoever is engaging with your website, make sure that they are getting the best and most optimized experience. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Randall. I can't wait to see everything that you have to present. Um, I would just like to say as we go through this, please ask questions, even if you're not quite sure you're asking it the right way. Um, the questions in the Q&A will be answered during the last 15 minutes of the presentation, so between 1 and 1.15. Um, so the more questions you ask, the better you're going to understand um, everything that's being shown here today. All right, Randall, I think we're ready for you to get started. All right. So um, first thing I want to do is I am going to navigate to Google Analytics. And so essentially, um, Google Analytics, in a nutshell, is a web analytics tool that's offered by Google, um, which is been created and, and developed to help web users or those with online properties to analyze uh, their website traffic. And so, you know, depending on what your business is or what your brand is or what your organization is, um, web analytics or digital analytics could be a small part of what you do or could be a very large part of what you do. Um, I think the most important thing to remember is that again with these digital analytics is that there are many many different uh, platforms uh, and many products and tools out there depending on how big your footprint is or how sophisticated um, sophisticated is a bad word how how uh, sort of big your your operation is and so um, google analytics is a great tool because a it integrates it integrates with a bunch of other Google products um, and it's free. And so it's uh, obviously one of the more popular ones because of the fact that it's free. A lot of people use it. It has a great vibrant community. Um, and so it's, and, and it can give you some great information about your website, your web presence. Um, in a nutshell, Google Analytics itself, the way it works is that um, through a Google account, you are issued a code. Um, and basically by taking a small snippet of code and installing it on your website, then any user actions or, or uh, any of the things that you're monitoring users for is then sent back to Google and Google processes it, warehouses it, stores it and displays it um, and can serve it up in their Google Analytics platform. Um, for the most part, there are essentially, you know, four different aggregation methods or the way that Google organizes their information and serves it up to customers. And I'm just going to quickly go through a couple of those just to look at sort of what's there um, and give an overview of what sorts of things you can find and how you can use those things within Google Analytics. So um, what we're looking at now, and, and just for the record, what we're doing is there is a, the Google merchandise store where Google sells a lot of, they sell, you know, stuff from Google watches to t-shirts to mugs to a bunch of stuff that they have there. They opened up the analytics to the Google merchandise store 
and you can get access to that. And that's what I'm using as our sample um, to, to sort of look at what's there. So this is, this, this is actually live data that's coming in. Currently there are 29 people. Um, on the Google Merchandise Store. Um, but I wanted to use this to demonstrate um, sort of what can be there. Any of the other analytics stuff that we have is obviously proprietary to whichever client it is set up for. So we're not gonna delve specifically into anyone's uh, analytics. Um, but this first view is just the real-time data. And so real-time is exactly what it says. If someone were to log on to that store right now, the, the uh, sessions would show up here. You're able to see where the site comes from, uh, the type of device that is used, so whether it's a mobile, a desktop, or a tablet device. Um, you can, if there were any social media traffic driving traffic over, we would see that here. Um, and the keywords. I'll get into the keywords a little bit in a little bit more depth uh, when I get into the uh, behavior section, but uh, the the relationship with Google and keywords has changed over the years. And unfortunately, it's something that hasn't always been to the benefit of the end user because a lot, frankly, a lot of the keywords that people use to get to your site, you see this not provided, um, have been filtered out. Um, Google's rationale for doing so is that by passing those on, it does not um, fit in with their privacy goals and destinations and so essentially um, as you can see with this lock like we recommend for all websites that this site is encrypted and so when someone does a search um, or someone does a google search that site is encrypted and it doesn't pass that keyword data on which is why we don't see that here but again i'll get into that um, in a little bit more detail but you can look specifically at locations where your your traffic is coming from um, we can see traffic sources the pages that are served up, um, any events. Events are generally more on the qualitative side and they are specific actions um, or whether it's looking at a video or submitting a form or, um, you know, if it's a certain search or something that's done, um, looking at a picture, there are a lot of different things that can be put in there. And by working um, with a developer, we can set up the interactions that we want to track that will come in through this. Um, and lastly, if you have um, an e-commerce site uh, or just in general, in general, one of the things that you can do within analytics is set up goals um, that uh, you, you have for your users. That is also, also sent through um, with conversion. So you can see the three they have set up here are uh, if someone completed a purchase, if someone registered, or if someone entered uh, checkout with something in their cart. The first section or sort of way that the data is aggregated is with this audience overview. And so with the audience overview, and this is sort of the main way that this data is displayed um, for most of these, and this, this is the kind of thing that can be tweaked and changed, but for by default, you get to last 14 days worth of data. And so this is just giving us a look at users over that time. And by highlighting any of the data points, you can see for a particular day um, how many users were there on the site. Users can be changed. You can change that to specifically new users, or you can look at page views. You can look at sessions. Um, they're all different metrics. Quickly and Within analytics, one of the things I like is generally when you mouse over something, it will give you a definition of what it is. Um, but essentially, a user is uh, a visitor. Um, the way I like to think of it, a user is a visitor and a session is a visit. So you can have, which is why these two numbers would be different, you could have this number of people but have actually been to the site this number of times. Just some arithmetic, the number of sessions per user would just simply be the users divided by the sessions, or the sessions divided by the users, I'm sorry. Um, page views are there. This also gives you pages per session. The average session duration will let you know how long the average visit was. Now, again, alluding back to what I stated earlier about certain uh, metrics being better for out of the box or standalone, or certain metrics, um, are a little more helpful over time. 
like the average session duration is definitely one I think makes more sense if you look at it, if you look at a trend as opposed to taking it just one day and saying, okay, this is the, 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 the you know, the amount of time that someone was on the site. Um, the bounce rate is essentially a bounce is when you have a single page visit with the site um, without looking at any other pages. So it is when you have one session by one user with one page view. Now, in the event that you configure or you are tracking events, so let's say that on your site you have a sign up form and someone comes directly to your sign up form, which is your landing page, and they fill in the form and they submit it and they've given you their email address. Well, technically they have looked at one page and it would be considered a bounce. But because we've configured the site to look at signups or if someone successfully submits a form as an event, then that will not be included as a bounce. And so your bounce rate will be more accurate. Now, a lot of times I'll get the question, what's an ideal bounce rate? And generally the answer is the one that people don't like to hear, but the, the answer is it really depends. And so um, no two sites are alike, no two brands are alike. Um, depending on the architecture, how your, your pages are laid out. Um, some pages are laid out to have all the information in one page. Some places you have to navigate across the site to get it. So, um, you know, that the sort of philosophy behind the, arc, behind the architecture of the site is going to set up what your ideal bounce rate is. But again, that's another metric that um, I think is important to look at over time as opposed to taking one particular date uh, in, 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 and using that for your total context. Um, within the audience tab, there are different uh, things you can look at, ways to slice and dice your audience within demographics. It will give you, uh, and this, this is user submitted data to Google, it will give you an idea of what your male female ratio is, what your ages are. They also have interest categories there, um, which are pre-populated by Google, which people who are signed into their Google account using your site, that information will be passed off and anonymized. You'll see a certain per percentage that they use. They have a threshold. Um, and so to just to make sure that there's no individually identifiable information depending on what your totals are. Um, again, with an audience, you can see generally where your audiences are coming from with location, with behavior. You can see uh, new versus returning users, how often they come. The technology, again, will give you an overview like for mobile devices, um, it will tell you uh, an overview of, of, of desktop versus tablet versus uh, cell phones. And you can also get screen dimensions and see how big folks' screens are. So if you're looking at that data, you can say, wait a minute, you know, speaking of the bounce rate, um, you know, the bounce rate is really high on this set of pages on cell phones. And then by further investigating, we see that you know, the sign up is cut off and no one is able to use it and then we're able to fix it. And that's one of the things that one of the ways we can use our data to sort of uh, make the site experience better. Um, moving along to the acquisitions tab. So audience tells you about your audience once they're on the site, the acquisition tab and the reports there will tell you about how folks navigated to your site. So Google has set up these default channels, um, which will tell you how people get there. So organic search, obviously that's someone who performs a search in one of the Google recognized search engines. The big ones being Google itself, Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, Ecosia, so on and so forth. Um, I'll skip direct and come back to it. Referral is basically any, any traffic that comes to you where a referrer has been passed on. So you've clicked on a link from another site and it has sent you to, to, to your site. So that referral data would be passed on. So that's, that, that's all traffic that has come from elsewhere. Social, they're referred traffic as well, but those are traffic, that's traffic that comes from a specific social network um, as it's been defined, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, there are a bunch of social networks that are there. The thing, I, another thing that's nice about Google is if you if you have a social network that you use that is not necessarily uh, recognized, it can be added um, and that can be put there. 
These others are more of the advertising stuff. So the uh, affiliate, whether it's affiliate advertising, display, paid search, um, all Google channels where they will send the traffic over. Going back to direct. So essentially direct traffic is direct. So if someone goes and types in the URL in the, in the bar um, and does a direct visit, that is how it's calculated. However, direct also basically includes Essentially, direct traffic is any traffic which has not been tagged with anything else here. So if we're at work and we're on Slack and I send you a link to check out a site and you click on that link from Slack, Slack is not going to send referral data. So when that traffic shows up um, in Google Analytics, it is going to show up as direct. So, so technically, it came from a Slack conversation or an IM conversation, um, but essentially, direct traffic is any untagged traffic. So one of the things we do as well is when uh, someone is executing, say, an email campaign. And so depending on what platform they're using, um, the traffic may not be tagged. So you would see this sort of bump from direct traffic, but you would not know where it came from. And so one of the things we encourage our clients to do is to make sure that all of our campaigns are tagged and we organize those things and get it done so that when that traffic comes in, it will be seen properly and, and properly attributed. Um, I'll come back with a little more detail a little later about specifically Google Ads and Search Console, but within this um, acquisition platform, you can see where your traffic comes from. You'll get more details about Google Ads and Search Console, any social media traffic that comes in and any specific campaigns, whether that's email campaigns um, or any other marketing campaigns that are out there. The behavior tab looks at your traffic, how it behaved when it was there. So whether that's looking at specific pages, um, this is where you'll also find your site speed reports um, and your site search reports. Just a note about site search, and I can look and see if any are done here. I think this is one of the most underused metrics out there. Um, because once folks are on your site, if they are actually engaging and and entering a search query for something that they are looking for. That's their way of giving um, feedback or engaging with you. And so I think it's really important to always look at these um, and, and through the depth of the report, you're able to see what people search for, what pages they ended up with, um, if they actually visited those pages, how long, how long they spent on the site after that. And that can help you with your general strategy or architecture in a site if you find that you know content is if people are looking for something all the time and it's there, then maybe it's time to look at how the content is displayed on the site and put it in a more prominent place, just as an example. In the events that we talked about, um, which can be configured, which we will work, we work with you to figure out what events you want to do. Now, out of the box, Google Analytics will not monitor these things. And that's where it takes a little behind the scenes work where we're working with a developer or working with someone who can configure that stuff to, to send it um, to Google Analytics to make sure that on the, on the end, we get the information that we want there. And lastly is the conversions. And essentially, if you do not have an, if you have an e-commerce site, if you're selling anything, this is where you will get all that data. Um, but also more importantly, another thing that's really important and a great feature in, in Google Analytics is goals. And so you can set your goals up to either be action-based um, or based on a particular experience. So for example, you can have a goal that if a visitor comes to your site, you know, you want them to spend at least three minutes on your site. And so every visitor that has spent three minutes on the site, that'll trigger that goal. And so within that goal, you will see an overview and here in the in the demo account. So these are some of the goals that they have. You know, uh, if someone completed a purchase, the engaged users, that would be the, an example of staying on a site, you know, for however much time. Or if you want people to visit a certain number of pages. Um, or if your goal is for someone to submit an email address or submit a form um, or to watch a video or to download, you know, a piece of uh, a PDF or something, intellectual property, a picture. Um, all of those things can be configured as goals. Um, and furthermore, you can even add values to those goals. And so all of this, and with all of this information, 
having it in your Google Analytics interface, it will be there as long as you have your account. And so um, historically, you'll be able to tap into this stuff um, and just proactively, you can look in and see, you know, if there are any pages where goals are happening, um, if there are any, in terms of looking at, at funnels, if there, you know, if people come in to your content and your, your goal is to get people to read, you know, three pages on the site and you find that's happening a lot more in LinkedIn than Google, than Facebook, let's say, um, then the question is, okay, is it the way we're targeting? Is the audience that's coming in from Facebook? It just brings up different ways. And then there are different ways to, to use that information to either change your marketing strategies um, or just make, you know, little small adjustments for things that are there. back to our so we've just gone over um, reports specifically now within Google Analytics and this is not done here in this um, in this site but within Google Analytics you can take your search console and you can connect it so what the search console is is within the Google search engine and there is a search console for Bing but in general most most sites I've dealt with over the last 10 to 15 years, like it's almost always nine, at least 90% of traffic comes from Google. Um, uh, and again, because they're both Google properties, that's why they have this native ability to link um, the search console. But the search console gives you information about what people are searching for or how people are how your site is performing in Google search. Um, so the information you need is here on the left. The performance will just tell you, um, and this gives you different metrics or KPIs here. Um, total clicks, impressions. Impressions are the number of times that your site or a page or property from your site showed up in someone's search result. Um, the position, the average position is where those things happen. So if someone searches for, you know, whatever the search term is and your site shows up as, you know, 20th in one query and first in another, your average position will be a 10, um, will be the will be the 10 position. Now that's definitely another one of those metrics that over time, it's good to look at and see if we're making any changes. And so one of the things you can do is, Google will give you this, so Google get, the Search Console gives you this information by query, so that's queries that are making your site or property appear in Google Search. Pages will show you which pages that are, those are being done for. Countries are obviously where those searches are executed from. Devices are the device that people were using. Um, about two years ago, Google switched the default crawling to be done on mobile site so the 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 web crawlers or the bots that google uses to index sites defaults to whatever the mobile experience is first um since that is quickly becoming the, the you know the majority way that people access sites um the search appearance is where your site appeared the vast majority happens in web but you can also have uh, traffic that you get from pictures so if you have pictures that are on your site you know, whenever we put those on there, we encourage people to include the meta information so that Google is able to, can't see the picture, but it knows what the picture is about because that stuff gets indexed too. And there are ways that images can draw traffic to sites as well. Um, within the index bar, the coverage will show you, and I apologize that I can't, there's no actual sample data that we can look into, but if anyone has any questions about this, I'm happy to uh, you know, we can set up a time to go over and, and talk about this within your own search console. The coverage will show you which pages Google has indexed or not indexed. Um, the sitemaps are something that are created from your website, which is essentially is marked up structured language, which tells Google how your information is organized. And you can even see in there how often things are to be uh, Index obviously, you know, for example, you would want your blog section to be indexed more than your main pages because generally your pages don't change all that often. Whereas if you're putting out new fresh content, um, you would want that 
indexed as often as you can get. Um, mobile usability will tell you how usable or how much your how responsive your pages are. So the example I cited before, you have a mobile site, say you have a sign up form and it's not showing up on the smaller screens. Um, that's something that will eventually show up here in these mobile usability reports um, and will let you know which pages you need to get up to snuff because of, again, if Google senses that on the mobile side, which is the default for crawling them, that people cannot see the content, therefore can't use it, that is going to ultimately not help um, your ability to get indexed higher. Um, AMPs are accelerated uh, mobile pages, which are a specific type of page build out. Um, but Google will also give you the information for those. Links will give you information of the, that's the all of your, your backlinks. So Google will continually update and let you know the sites that have linked to your site. Um, so it's good to periodically look at those as well, look at the quality of what's coming in. Um, hopefully not, you know, get into a situation where you're getting bad links or spam links from somewhere. If that happens, that's a good place to find out. But it's also a good place to find you know, if people are linking to your content, often that's, uh, you know, you can link back to them and have sort of some mutual content building things, but you'll see, or if you see that you're getting links, but you're not actually getting traffic um, from those sites, then that might be an opportunity to reach out and, and maybe have them restructure how your content is there. But again, the data is all there for you to use. Um, Next, we have Google Ads, which I'll just really, really quickly go into. So again, in the acquisition tabs, if you were running any Google Ads, um, you're able to see how those ads are performing um, within your analytics traffic. There's a separate portal and interface for ads, but it will, um, it links here. And so you can see all of the different campaigns, uh, bid adjustments that you have in your pay-per-click stuff, keywords, the queries that people are using, um, hour of day, display targeting, all the more, you know, in the weeds ad stuff, which we can cover at another time. But it's nice to have the interface together so that whenever you're in your Google Analytics, you can access any of this stuff and it is there. Um, the last thing I wanted to sort of uh, look at was managed analytics. And essentially what managed analytics are, something that we offer uh, with analytic design and mosaic data services, but it gives you, so if you have a WordPress site and you are, um, you know, generally in the back end uh, or doing work within your site, we've created uh, an interface and an ability to look at your, whether it's Google Analytics or whatever information you want to tie in, um, it gives you an opportunity to look at it in a clean, crisp, and easy to use way. So with a site that we have, um, essentially this is a, a sample dashboard where we use the same information that we were looking at with uh, Google Analytics data from the merchandise store. Um, but this is just, and again, these, this can be designed and manipulated to look at a bunch of different data in a bunch of different ways. It's just a way to visualize the things there. Um, and we think it's helpful uh, and, and hopefully convenient and useful because it's right here in the, in the in interface that you're using to, to do work on your site anyway. Um, so for example, this is just looking at like the last month of this stuff. Um, you can set up scorecards, which let you compare different time frame. So this is letting me know that this number of users is down slightly from the same period um, before then, the same month before then, for sessions, page use, bounce rates. Um, this lets you look at trend data for that same time. Uh, a great way to visualize where by country, this can be done by city, by metro area, however you want to, to break that down. Um, this also gives you an opportunity to look at sort of two in a way that's not necessarily as intuitive within the analytics platform. Let's say you want to look at, you know, how your traffic, your, 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 your channel sources for traffic, but you also want to look at their engagement when they're there. And this is just an easy way to uh, visualize those two KPIs in one place. Uh, just, you know, some more stuff with the demographic data, 
And so again, this is just a, a top level example of what is there. Um, but, you know, again, we would work with you and, and the advantage of, of using this managed analytics system is that, you know, this data is Google Analytics, but if you, you know, if we wanted to plug in some search console data, if we wanted to plug in some Google Ads data, or even if there were any third party uh, options out there, things that we're using, we would be able to plug that data in and visualize what is there. So that's all I have for the presentation side. I know this is a lot of stuff and I didn't want to talk too much about everything was there. Um, I wanted to just quickly glide to our takeaways. So um, essentially, you know, understanding what your visitors do on your website um, can, can really provide insights into, uh, you know, where you are and where you want to be. So you've, you've, you've done the research up front, you've built the website or the website's been there for a while. Um, you know, you're, you're, and by really looking at how users are a getting there, B using it and C, you know, when they're using it, um, is it fulfilling what they need? Are they coming back? Are they doing some of the, the engagement things that you want to, uh, to have. And so the key is, again, for those engagement things, we have to make sure that the site is set up to back and monitor those things and make sure that we're getting that data because your, your the decisions you make in the data you get is only really going to be as good as how, how good it's captured. So, um, you know, so it, it, it's, it's the analytics portion is sometimes overlooked, but it's really important to use because again, that is your data and it is, uh, you know, really a solid tool for figuring out how to optimize your site. It's not a static thing. It doesn't stay the same. You're constantly updating it with content. You're constantly updating how, you know, the architecture of it. And you really ultimately want to know how your users are using it and making sure that it is set up to accommodate their needs. Um, so, you know, and, and with analytics or with any data collection, it's about your data sources. So whether it's what users are using on the site, whether they're bringing in data from social media networks, from marketing tools, um, we can use you know the, the right tools and technologies to make sure that your strategy is being uh, supported. Um, and really, you know, you know your business. Um, and the best way to, again, make sure that everything is optimized is to make sure that we're measuring, you know, the things that are important to you. There are tools that are there out of in analytics out of the box. Um, and for the most part, most of the things that you want to, you know, monitor are there, but there may be things that aren't covered. But that's where we're here as your partner, that we can build custom solutions to make sure that we are really monitoring what's important to your business. What's important to your business is not important you know, to someone else's. And that's why it's really an individualized thing. Um, and again, we really want to partner with you to make sure that from an analytics perspective, you're getting the data you need, you're able to access the data you need, and you're able to turn that data into actionable things. Um, and that's, you know, frankly, where I think the managed analytics comes in and can help you um, visualize things and manipulate the data in a way that is most useful to you. Um, and even within that, we can, you know, set up email schedules to have things sent out and, and sent to different people. And just, it's really a nice way to manage the data that's there. Um, and it's all accessible right there from your WordPress website dashboard. So I will move from here to the questions. Tanya, Excellent. have you had any questions? Randall, we've had a lot of really great questions. Thank you to everybody who asked one. Um, and thank you to the presentation so far. It's been really, really insightful. Um, so first, uh, first question up is please discuss how to tell Google Analytics what website you want to track. My Google Analytics account seems to be associated with an old website and I don't know how to point it to my new one. Sure. So, um, what I, I, I suspect that, yes, and so when your site, whichever site you're, you're most 
modern version of a site is, it is possible that the Google Analytics tracking code did not make it to that new site. And that's probably what happened if it's still, uh, so there's an instance of the old site um, and that's where the old data is there. So it, within the configuration um, or within your new site, we just have to make sure that the Google Analytics tracking code is in that site. Um, and that even if it is producing stuff, if you had an old Google Analytics property and you want to keep that historical data, we just have to make sure that we connect those two so that the new site is collecting data and it is being passed on to the Google Analytics property that you were looking at. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so just as a follow up to that question, um, you know, we have, you, know, you can reach out to us by chat, by phone, um, just visit our, you can visit our website directly, send us a message. If you're, if you're struggling in an area or you're not sure about your analytics code, that's what we're here to help with. So next question, um, for conversions, how customizable are they or are they specific to ones you choose from a list? Great question. Okay, so the question is for okay, how come how customizable are they? Specific to one to choose list. So, um, conversions are customizable um, from a list is yeah. So I mean, so if the if the question is from a list of sort of pre-populated things, um, the answer is there are some templates there. But yes, we can customize conversion to whatever um, setup that you have. And so you know, again. It could be a whole wide range of things, but that's where we're here as your partner um, to figure out custom solutions to set up conversions. So conversions can ultimately be whatever your KPIs or whatever the important things are um, that a visitor is doing on your site, we can set it up to track those. Okay. So yes, we can certainly um, be flexible. Great. Um, so then the next question actually uh, follows up to that question, which is, I know Google Analytics can track a lot more than just how many people come to my site. What else can I see if it's set up to track? So what type of capabilities does Google Analytics have from a tracking perspective? What, what could I choose to see? Sure. So this actually defaults back to, the, to the, the previous question a little bit. The best way to see what is being tracked now is just to go through all of the standard reports that are there. And so you will get an idea, like I would look at events, um, I would look at goals, and, and if nothing has been configured already, um, then you'll be looking at the basic analytics stuff, page views, time on page, source of traffic, um, navigation within the site, so on and so forth. Um, but if there are different things that you want to look at, that is where we would partner with you to configure that stuff and start, uh, you know, collecting that data um, and and using it to, uh, you know, inform whatever it is that you're going to do. Particularly if you're going to set things up either as goals uh, or conversions, then once we start getting it. Um, we can start using that stuff and factoring in. Unfortunately, the way that things are set up, there is no way to retroactively add anything. So, for example, if we set up, if we have not been, you know, if we have videos embedded on the site and we're and we were interested in monitoring how people are interacting with those videos, like how long they're watching them, or or uh, you know, to, sort of whatever other metrics are involved with that. If we set it up now, we'll catch everything going forward. But there is no way to apply that to things that have not been configured in the past. So then just as a follow up to that question, I know that we've discussed internally in the past, and this is something that we've helped people with um, in terms of your conversion. So taking a look at your videos and how long people actually, um, how long people actually watch your videos for. The fact that you can tell if, if uh, copy, if, um, if somebody copies and pastes from your website, these types of things, what other types of things can Google Analytics track um, that are not commonly known? Sure, so I mean, the short answer is um, we, can, we, will, we can find ways to track essentially whatever it is that you need to track 
but it's any of the engagement things. So whether, so whatever people can do on a website to engage with stuff. So whether that's, you know, things like it's looking at pictures or it's downloading or listening to audio or it's downloading different files, or it's, uh, you know, like you said, one of the, one of the things we can look at is, is if, and a cool tool is if someone is, is copying and pasting certain data or certain content from the sites, we can see what, you know, what was copied and pasted, um, which, which text was taken and gone, or was take, taken and used. So um, there really is a wide range of things. Um, and I think the best way to answer that question is to look individually at what sorts of actions would make uh, an interaction with your site, um, you know, what sorts of things or what ways people can interact with your site that is most beneficial for your business and then tracking that way but i mean the honest answer is there are a, a bunch of different things uh, or ways that that you can measure engagement um but it really depends on what you need okay that's perfect thank you um so if you're curious about what can be tracked or if you look at your site and you're not really certain what to track on your site, we are happy to take a look at it and put together a list of recommendations um, just based on what we see, based on what you're trying to accomplish. Absolutely. Um, so the next, um, the next question is, um, I see a lot of references to key performance indicators or KPIs. What exactly is a KPI and how does that impact what's important to see? So KPIs or, or key performance indicators are um, essentially within a marketing, in some cases an advertising with your website, but a marketing strategy or SEO strategy um, that are what you determine to be the most important metrics um, that can be measured. So, for example, if your KPI, if the KPI you choose to look at is, is new users. So if your goal is to get your website or grow website traffic to get in, in front of a certain number or percentage of new users, whether it's every day, every week, every month, um, that's an example of what a KPI could be. So the KPI in this case would be the percentage or the, the number of new users. And so what we try to do is sit down with you, look at your business, look at how your website or web property um, is put together and figure out how, when you get eyeballs on your site or you get interaction with your site, which, what actions or things are going to help boost your business. And we will determine what those KPIs are. So whatever those actions are, will then become your KPIs. We will figure out how to track that, how to make sure that information is processed and can be used within your Google Analytics platform. Um, and then by measuring that over time, the KPI is seeing what changes are there and then taking that and making whatever, whether it's an architectural change, a content change, uh, how things are marketed change um, and figure out. Because ultimately our goal is to use your whatever your web or digital presence is to boost your business awesome thank you thank you for explaining that um all right so these next two questions are <clears throat> are very similar um so my google analytics are pretty much zero how do i use this information to learn where to put my energy as a lone business owner into marketing such as social media newsletter campaigns etc and then the other the other follow-up question to that is what can I do to be seen faster? I read a lot about blogging. What else can make a difference? That's a great question. Um, the world of digital marketing is um, a crowded one, frankly. And there's just a lot of effort to get uh, people's attention for what it is that you need. So. Within the confines of Google Analytics, I think, especially if you're starting out and you have, um, you know, what you perceive to be a low amount of traffic, um, the best thing you can do is really pay attention to whatever it is that comes in. So if you're starting to see some 
organic traffic where people are finding you on in search engines it's important to look at that content and figure out how people are getting there and figure out if you can give them even more of that um, so that's why blogging you know is often described as a good thing if you have if all of your content is coming in through one particular area or product um, by blogging about other stuff that you know people are searching for you are expanding the breadth of your content and having a, sort of casting a wider net where you have the opportunity to catch more eyeballs for people that are looking things. But you can also look, use your analytics, you know, if you do anything on social media or if you have any marketing sort of cross uh, uh, platform marketing with any other blogs or brands or any affiliate things that are out there, seeing if you know, if you do two or three things, seeing which one is sending the most traffic to you, because then you can use that to figure out where you want to put your resources. Can I grow from what's coming from this source or do I have to look at a different source or is this strategy not working? So with the smaller amount of traffic, it just means that whatever you get has that much more of an impact and can give you an indication of where it's probably best to put your resources that you have. Okay, that's great. Um, that's a great answer. And um, we are also available by email or by chat to talk through this a little bit more. We're always happy to jump on the phone for 15 or 30 minutes to talk through what your strategy is, or at least what your vision is, what you would like to accomplish, and then kind of just brainstorm together to think through what activities you can be doing or should be happening in order to, um, in order to increase your visibility. So the next question, um, what analytic information can we see on competitors? That's a great question. It is. So within the Google Analytics dashboard, um, you will not see a lot about competitors. Um, where you can see a little more is within, um, and when I say a little, I mean a little, it, within the Search Console platform, there are chances that, and depending, again, this depends on the positioning of your brand um, and ultimately probably how mature your brand is, but there will be times when even if someone is doing a competitor search for a product or a, or some other property that you will start to show up in your competitor's search results, um, which is, where you want to be because then you'll be able to beef up your capabilities there um, but that is honestly probably the extent of what you will see um, so it's through either the any of the keyword stuff that comes into google analytics or the keyword data that is available in search console but just in terms of what sort of what kind of traffic your competitors are getting or specifically you know how their website is performing there are some services that will aggregate stuff. It's usually at an industry level and it's usually for bigger companies. Um, but in general, just like with your web analytics, that stuff is proprietary to your company. And unless they share it, you're not gonna see it. Okay, all right, great. Well, um, let me see. So the next question that we have is, um, what kind of data can I add to a managed analytics dashboard? So um, this is what's really nice about the managed analytics dashboard is we can, uh, we can add a bunch of different data. Most of it, uh, most, uh, a lot of things focused on marketing or advertising stuff. So if you are using, you know, if you're doing any kind of affiliate display, um, you know, banner ads, anything like that, we can take a lot of that marketing data. We can even, because of the interface that we use, if we have third party data and it can, you know, be thrown into a spreadsheet, we can use that data as well and visualize it and add it to the existing data we have. So even, you know, we can get into some sophisticated stuff if you have, um, you know, offline sales and we have a way to match some of those sales with actual you know, hits to the website, we can attribute. So we can do some nice attribution stuff there. So there's really, 
you know, the sky's the limit with what we can do with the managed analytics uh, display capabilities and what we can integrate there. So there are a suite of things that sort of integrate um, within the, the, the Google, within the Google family that integrate natively, but we can also try to integrate any third party things that are there. Um, and again, so, so even the other things we looked at were Search Console and, and Google Ads stuff that are native Google products. Um, they will tie in directly with the, you know, the platform we're using for our managed analytics. So we can tie and, and display and have all of that data work together and, and come up with some nice visualizations um, to make it most useful. Perfect. Thank you. I, I think that that's, that's something that we run into um, pretty often is first, you know, as, as people are trying to understand what the data means, what the different um, parts to the data means and how it applies to them. Once, um, once you start to understand exactly what you're looking at and what can be tracked, that's when your excitement can start to build a little bit because all the data that you can gather is, is amazing. Um, and what, how you can apply that data to your own strategy, almost any question that you need to know can be answered through your own data, if not immediately, you know, over time as that data builds, that's going to help you um, create a stronger strategy over time. Exactly. So the next question is, um, can I use Google Analytics to track behavior of a Facebook fan page? And um, Randall, we didn't talk a whole lot about how social media analytics play into your website or into Google Analytics, if at all. So can you touch just um, lightly on um, social media analytics versus Google Analytics? And um, uh, basically, if you're just looking at Google Analytics, what you're able to see or track. Absolutely. So um, the short answer is to use Google Analytics to track behavior of a Facebook fan page. Um, the answer is mostly no, but what, so for example, what you can see is if you have a Facebook fan page, um, you know, within Google Analytics, we can see what traffic has come from the page to your website. Um, but in terms of the engagement metrics within Facebook, um, that's a separate thing. So as Tanya alluded to, the social media analytics are going to be native to the platform that you're on. So Facebook has its own analytics, Twitter has its own analytics, LinkedIn has its own analytics. Um, what we are able to do again is see, and this is through a lot of the campaign tagging that we were talking about, um, is to track traffic that comes from those individual networks to your website. The good news is that with our managed analytics option, we can take those social media analytics platforms and we can visualize them separately with their own KPIs and their own metrics and, and everything that's affiliated with that. And in some cases, we can link what's there and compare that to how that worked for your website. So, you know, obviously the biggest thing being if any traffic was sent to your website um, from those networks. Um, but in general, the Google Analytics is the analytics for your website itself for the property. So any traffic that is on your website, um, depending on what your social media strategy is, you know, if you have for, and this is just an example, if you have LinkedIn groups or if you have, you know, a Facebook page, um, whatever folks are doing on that page, that's a separate analytics thing, but any traffic that is generated from that page to your website, um, we can segment and track within Google Analytics, if that makes sense. Yep, that makes perfect sense. And in the future, I think we probably will dive a little bit more into the different um, the different ways to track through social media directly their own analytics and how that works, even if we weren't able to cover that today. Um, so the last question that we have is a great question. Um, it's, do you offer analytics consulting on websites that are not hosted by you? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, so, Tony. 
No, it's okay. I was just going to say the answer to this is definitely yes. But Randall, do you want to speak a little bit more to um, to what we can do? We do highly recommend that you are hosted by Mosaic Data Services. But if you're not, we're more than happy to step in and help, whether it's through consultation or, at, or implementation, we're able to step in however you need. Um, Randall, did you have more information? And more? I, I will certainly say, um, and this is from experience. So I would, you know, I, I did this work for years before. And one of the most frustrating things was using the analytics to identify issues, um, technical issues or otherwise <clears throat> with a site. And I'm not a developer. I mean, I understand a lot of the technical side of analytics, but for a lot of issues that are out there, it's of utmost important to have a developer that can do what you need them to do. And the advantage of being with a company like Mosaic that has access to such great talent where the developers really understand how sites work and what they need, whatever we identify with the analytics, by having the relationship with the developers we have, it's easy to make that transition from what needs to be done to getting done. Certainly can work with other developers to do things. Um, there's sometimes, for lack of a better phrasing, uh, a, a, a barrier in communicating sort of what the technical thing that needs to be done versus what you know we're seeing with the analytics. Um, but in having, frankly, a company where the, the the strategy of having the analytics baked into what they're doing and sort of measuring things from the start, it makes that process so much easier and it makes it more seamless and frankly it gives you uh, a better integration of things um, takes less time and a lot less of having to go back to revisit things because it's already been baked in it's there and it's a great you know chemistry to have so again to answer the question absolutely we can consult on what's there on the outside um, but <clears throat> for those that have hosting and have their work done and working with the developers and Mosaic Data Services. It's a fantastic team. I was so happy to, to meet and begin to work with them. Um, and it just really works well together. Awesome, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, um, I think it looks like we've reached the end. We don't have any other questions. Um, and there's a whole lot of information, um, which we will be sending out the recording of the presentation through email and it's also available through the weekly buzz which we send out um, on uh, on my obviously a weekly basis um any questions at all please feel free to um, reach out to us at mosaicdataservices.com we're available through form through chat you can give us a call and um, we will work with you to resolve your questions or whatever your needs are so thank you again so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you at future webinars.